gifts, and I wish I could require every high school student in our church to watch this message uh, every year before you head off to school or every college student. Must you choose between the Christian faith and science? No. Must you choose between Christian faith and philosophical naturalism? And the answer there is clearly yes. You cannot be a philosophical naturalist and a follower of Christ. I really wish you'd told us that before we'd booked our tickets to first century Judea. <laughs> we can almost feel sorry for fundy parents with aspirations for their kids. A good science degree from a respectable public university is always going to be more impressive for potential employers than a diploma in quantum sophistry from the Ronald Reagan Institute of Gun Freedom. But, as is evidenced by all those chick tracks and uh, lousy movies where devout students get the better of their atheistic profs, middle class fundies live in dread of spending a small fortune on turning their godly sprogs into atheistic free thinkers. Luckily for those who live in the vicinity of Rochester, New York, lead cheerleader David Whiting at uh, Out of Town Salvation Mall, Northridge Church, has a remedy for what ails them. If you're a naturalist, a philosophical naturalist, then you believe there is no heaven, there is no hell, and there's certainly no God. If it's not physical, it's not real. This is their presupposition. This is their philosophy. This is their faith. So if you insist on naturalism, you enter your study with a presupposition that will taint your conclusions. Problem is, this rather quaint homespun well poisoning is likely to backfire when it runs into the works of the late to mid 20th century great American naturalists. Philosophers like Quine, Sellers, Davidson and Lewis. Students will realise that there is well-reasoned, closely argued and highly influential naturalist thought and that naturalism is not an unreasonable prejudice voiced simply because... We live in a fallen world and sin corrupts everything, including our ability to study science. They're clouded and, and they're um, confused by sin. And unless we receive God's grace, we cannot clearly see. Young minds, naturally attuned to the hypocrisy of their elders, will then question why Whiting felt the need to misrepresent naturalism or to spin some demon-haunted conspiracy theory in order to try and discredit it. And it is this, I find, rather than anything atheist professors say, that serves to undermine students' faith in their faith. And so, no doubt contrary to his ambitions, Whiting is doing sterling service in the cause of atheism. You see, to those tutored in philosophical naturalism, the status of questions like what is eternal what's natural or what's supernatural or why does anything exist rather than nothing well it's been addressed plausible influential and peer debated positions have been articulated as to why questions like this need not be addressed by a uniquely a priori first philosophy so much so that to raise these questions as if they are uncontroversial defeaters of naturalism is at best ignorant and at worst dishonest. Moreover, this kind of talk about the laws of nature... It is God who created the natural laws and orderliness of the universe. C.S. Lewis says this, Men became scientific because they expected law in nature, and they expected law in nature because they believed in a legislator. Well, it lacks just the most rudimentary understanding of what a law of nature is. It's real philosophy 101 no-brainer stuff. So when students recall Whiting's advice that you cannot be a Christian and a philosophical naturalist, it will appear to young questioning minds that what he was in fact admitting was that his brand of fundamentalism is incompatible with philosophy. That is, of philosophy in general and properly understood as an ongoing honest process of critical reflection rather than a settled body of irrefutable truth. Although to be fair in admitting this, Whiting is perhaps being more honest than other aggressive apologists such as William Lane Craig and even sometimes the great Alvin Plankton. Yes that's right, Alvin 
Plankton. Christian philosopher Alvin Plan Planington, Planetus. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening. Hey there, if you fancy going on a bit of a pilgrimage, then why not head over to my Patreon site and make up the numbers to about 12, because that'll be sort of appropriate. The linky thing will be up there somewhere. Thank <laughs> you.